my name is AJ Pruitt and I'm the author of Anathalian and the second book in the Anathalian series, Earthquaking. And in this video, I'm going to talk about something different, something other than Anathalian and being an author and writing and stuff. Um, and the reason why I want to do this video is because I keep waking up at like 3 a.m. and feeling like I need to do this video. So here I am doing this video. Um, and before I kind of say what I want to say, um, I think this can be beneficial to anyone. So regardless of who you are, where you are in life, um, go ahead and watch this and hear what I have to say, please. Um, so yeah, because it's a topic a lot of people talk about, a lot of people have opinions about, and I wanted to share from my experience what opinions I had in this subject. And um, so before I talk about it, I want to tell you a little bit about myself because it matters in what I'm going to say. So first of all, I am pregnant, if you didn't notice. Here's my bump. I don't know if you can see my bump. 32 weeks pregnant now, getting a little hard to breathe. So I may get out of breath. My hormones are crazy, so if I start crying during this video, it's normal. I cry like every 36 minutes during the day over nothing sometimes. So it's normal. Um, and I'll get past it. So that's the first thing. I'm pregnant, 32 weeks pregnant. Been doing this for a little bit. And the second thing I want to say is that before now, my husband and I have been married... We've been married right now, 11 and a half years. And before now, this is my first time getting pregnant. And before then I could not get pregnant at all. It just, was, it just wasn't physically possible. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. We just couldn't get pregnant. We couldn't have a baby. And we had just accustomed ourselves to that truth. So those two things are important for what I'm gonna say. And I kinda wanna say two main things in this video. The first thing is, see I'm out of breath already. The first thing I want to say is that um, a lot of t the times we hear people say that babies are not like humans, they're not alive until they come out. And um, I, I am so amazed every day by little Elbin in my tummy. He's, he's, his, he really is alive and he really is his own person. It's amazing how I talk, I'll talk or my husband will talk and he'll react. To us talking um and when certain other people talk he like gets still I think he's a little shy it's like he has his own personality he's he's really a little human in there and he's alive and when I eat certain foods he gets moving around and squirming around when I try to lay down and go to sleep he has his own agenda and so it's not just it's not just like when you run your heart beats faster and you kind of you are your organs, it's like a different person in there. Like he has his own ideas of what needs to happen sometimes. Um, and it's, it's really amazing how being pregnant, like a lot of people have the argument that babies are alive from conception and you can believe that or not, but like until you get pregnant, I think that you don't really fully grasp the, the enormity, the, not enormity, the, the reality of that statement, how like uh, the baby inside me is is its own human. He's not it. He, well, I say it because like you could have a boy or a girl, and so I'm trying to talk to you too, not just me. But the baby inside you can have his or her own personality. It's not a part of you, but it is a part of you. But it's not a part of you. It's but all that to say, it's a strange, amazing, weird thing. But being pregnant for these 32 weeks has shown me absolutely 100% of my mind that a baby inside you is totally alive, totally growing, very much growing, um, live human. And he's quiet right now because his personality is when he's supposed to do things, he doesn't do anything. He's a little fox. That's what I call him. He's a little fox. So it's so neat how they even have personalities before they come out. They are real. They're alive. They're human. And they're their own human. <laughs> Um, and also I wanted to say that, and then I also wanted to say that a lot of the time in this argument, in this area of issue in the world, you hear people talk about like my body, my choice. And a lot of people get really upset when they hear that and they say, oh, you know, it's not your choice and all that. 
But I was thinking about that when I wake up at 3 a.m. and I'm kind of thinking, you know, it. you do have a choice. In most situations in life, not necessarily attached to this subject, you have a choice of what you can do. Usually, not all the time, but usually you have a choice of what you can do. And you really do have a choice and so nobody can take that away from you. But whenever you get pregnant and when I got pregnant, I am in a stable marriage, a loving marriage. We've been married 11 years and um, it still felt kind of like your control was taken away from you. Like you suddenly didn't have a choice. And that's what it kind of feels like. And so maybe that's why the phrase has come about, but that's not my point. My point is that even if you are in a good situation, it does kind of feel like your choice is taken away like this baby's gonna grow. <laughs> Whether you like decide, I think I want this or I don't want this. Like I said, we didn't know, we didn't think I could get pregnant. And I couldn't for 11 years. We have proof, 11 years of proof. I couldn't. Um, and then I did. And it was kind of, it's kind of like, you're just like, whoa, I, I didn't plan for this. I didn't want this. I didn't think about it. And a lot of people who have not good situations, I mean, I can't even imagine how you feel even more unstable and afraid. And I felt afraid. I was like, what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to my body? What's going to happen to our home? You know, and it just felt very much like you just want to take back control. You want to have some kind of say and some kind of choice in it all. And so it feels like if you can have some say and have some choice, maybe you could take a little bit of sanity back. I don't know. Um, but you know, if you could just flip a switch and say, okay, this is the route in my life I want to take or not. And that, that feels very comforting to be able to in your life, in any situation say, I have a choice and this is what I want to do and get to decide your own choice. And so, like I said, maybe that's why the, phrase came around my body my choice because I am a person I have another person in me but I'm a person and I still want to make a choice um and I want to I want to talk about how often whenever we talk about that choice we usually think of either terminate your pregnancy or keep it going and those and have the baby and keep the baby and those are the two options and if you're not ready for a baby, if you're kind of scared about a baby, thinking about all the things to do with a baby are very scary and like overwhelming. Again, I said I'm in a stable marriage, a stable life. Husband has a good job. I'm a writer, so I have a terrible job. Um, but we, we are able to do the things we need to for the baby. But if you're not, I can see why it would be so overwhelming that you could just feel like you just can't handle it and you just want to have that choice to stop. Um, <clears throat> take a deep breath and, and it does affect your body. Like I said, I can't breathe right now because there's someone inhabiting me. Um, and it just, it just affects everything. And so it's scary and it's hard and it would be very easy and understandable, honestly, to just say, I just want to flip the switch and say, I don't want to have that. But there's like a third choice. And I've been thinking about this a lot because of I, because I wasn't able to get pregnant for so long and then suddenly I was, it occurred to me that you have a third choice. There are so many people, so many people like me and my husband and I can name like a bunch of other people we just know and have heard of that cannot have kids. They just can't. And I said a little bit ago, in most situations you have a choice and in that situation you, you don't have a choice. We couldn't couldn't have a kid and that was it that we that we didn't have a choice we didn't have this or this choice we didn't have a choice to say yes I do or yes I don't we we didn't have a choice we just couldn't and there was nothing that could change that um well there was something obviously the power of God is about it I can't figure because I didn't do anything different but anyway um a lot of people don't have the choice to have kids unless, and you're probably thinking it, unless they adopt. And to adopt a baby, there have to be babies up for adoption. And if, you know, if you think about it like that, if you're thinking about, I'm not sure I can take care of this baby, I'm not sure I want to, whatever the situation, why you might be going between what you think are just two choices to either keep the baby or terminate your pregnancy, think about that third choice, how the third choice of keeping your baby and carrying him around and not being able to breathe for a few months 
<laughs> and then giving your baby up to adoption to a family who doesn't who doesn't have a choice of if they can have a baby or not but then you because you took the third choice then they can have a choice of if they want a baby or not because honestly like that's the only way some people can have a baby to adopt and it's it they will love your baby i mean there i know so many families that just so badly want a baby and so much just I don't know how to explain it and I feel like I'm getting emotional so I don't want to go too much into it um but but think about it like that don't think about my body my choice means either I can have an abortion or I can keep the baby as my own think about my body my choice as this this thing that think about being pregnant as this thing that either you can you can choose to stop it and stop people from having a choice as a result stop your baby from having a choice stop other people who don't have babies from having a choice or you can make the choice to keep your baby alive and let other people take care of them if you feel like you you're not ready for it or you can't handle it um and and in doing that in keeping your baby alive you give that baby a choice of what they're going to be when they grow up and you give another family one more family a choice of raising a baby of helping a baby of giving them that chance to be parents that they never could have if you didn't just keep your baby for nine months it seems like a long nine months like a long time but then I look back and I was like oh wow it's already been eight months wow that was kind of fast I got big fast um, and it would mean so much to people if you just considered that third choice because so many people get so mad about those two choices um, choosing to keep your baby or choosing to terminate your pregnancy but think about that third choice of adoption because adoption is so wonderful and so precious like I said there's people who can't who don't have a choice and you can give them a choice too by making your choice to keep your baby and put them up for adoption if you feel like you can't do the mom thing um, so like I said I made this video because I kept waking up at 3 a.m. and just the thoughts about the things you think about when you're pregnant you know you think about food and you think about how you can't breathe and you also think about how amazing this is and how you hear all these people get so mad about the topic of abortion and how well this is what I'm thinking and how I just I just want to tell people in such a kind way how I feel not like emotionally but like physically how I feel He's alive in there. He really is. And how I just feel so heavy on my heart that if if Eldon didn't make it for some reason, I so much would be afraid we couldn't have a baby again. I would so hope that somebody would put up a baby for adoption so we could have them, you know? Some some people really want a baby that bad and it would mean the world to them if you chose that route to help them have a choice to have a baby when they couldn't before. So that's that that's that's what I wanted to say. I didn't want to get any arguments. I don't want to be political. I just I'm a pregnant lady who feels like I want to talk about this and share with you how important it is to to share your gift with somebody else if you're not ready for your gift. Um, and that's okay. It's okay. It's okay to share your gift with somebody else if you're not ready for it. But please do. Please do. Um, and that's, I guess that's all I want to say. If you comment, please be kind. Um, thank you very much for watching. Bye.